Hello to all fans of the Godot engine and shaders. It seems that I've grown quite fond of visual shaders because I've just recorded another video on this topic. Would you like to use such an animated shield or force field in your game? It's easier than it might seem. Keep watching, I'd be happy to demonstrate it to you. Since we'll be demonstrating the shield on an existing character, I won't be creating a new project this time. Instead, I've just opened an existing one that I used in the video about creating a third-person controller. If you haven't seen that video, I highly recommend watching it, but if you don't want to spend time on it right now, that's okay too. The shield, which we'll be mapping onto a simple sphere, can be used in any 3D scene and the principle will be the same every time. So let me start by creating a new scene in our project. Uh, right click here, create new, and I'll call it shield and uh, not area 2D, let's make it area 3D of course, because we will be working in the 3D scene. Okay. And now we need to add a mesh instance that would represent our spherical shield and a collision shape, because later in the game we definitely want to detect collisions uh, with the shield that would be caused by uh, enemy objects. So right click, add child node and first mesh instance 3D and again a child node and uh, collision shape 3D. And of course, uh, the mesh instance 3D should have some mesh. So we'll select a new sphere mesh, as I said. And now we want the shield to encapsulate a human character, which is uh, uh, slightly less than two meters tall. So let's make it three meters uh, in height. Or right, click and let's make three, uh, three meters. And of course, to keep the spherical shape, the radius should be half of that. 1.5 meter. So this is the basic mesh and the collision shape of course should match it. So again, uh, new sphere shape 3D, click and the radius is 1.5 meter. Very well. Let's click back to mesh instance 3D and add a new material, shader material of course, click and the shader would be a new shader. Let's make sure it's a visual shader and spatial because we are in the 3D space and put it to dedicated folder, which is shaders here, create, click and the visual editor opened. Let's make it a little bigger and we can start modeling. Of course, we could make the shield as a simple partially transparent sphere just like I did it in my uh, 2.5D uh, space shooter tutorial and we would be done. However, I would like to create a slightly more interesting effect that simulates energy ripples on the surface of the shield, giving the entire scene a much, much more realistic touch. To achieve this, we will use several instances of noise texture to which we'll apply various transformations to achieve the desired effect. Let's get started. Right click and we want uh, texture 2D. Here it is. And Goro makes it this process easier for us because we can directly choose noise texture 2D here, like this, click it and change its parameters in the inspector. Our sphere is quite large, so we'll also enlarge the texture to uh, 2048 by 2048 so it's basically a 2k texture and make it seamless so the texture is uh, yeah seamless of course then we'll click the noise parameter here and select new fast noise light click it again and now we can change the parameters of the noise itself but first, let's uh, add it to our sphere so we can observe the results. Connect like this. Okay. First thing we want to do is to change the noise type 
to cellular because that will give us I would say the best looking results but definitely not this we haven't finished yet we want to change more parameters expand fractal and change the type to none now it looks more like cells but we would like to have these dark areas larger because the shield would be only formed by the ripples which are represented by these uh, bright areas so again uh, we'll select cellular and change distance function from euclidean to euclidean squared that's better and let's do something about the jitter i think the best looking value would be 0.75 very well that's something we can build on so we can see the basic texture on the sphere as i mentioned at the beginning the pattern should be moving so we'll add the usual parameters time and speed and multiply their combination by connecting it to a special node called uv funk let's prepare it here right click uv funk and we will handle panning because that's how we'll simulate the motion of the texture okay and finally we will of course connect the result to our texture so let's do it now and let's add the parameters we've been talking about right click and time this is the first one and right click again and float parameter will be the speed okay let's rename it and i'll give it some default value for example 0.2 because the ripples shouldn't move too fast uh, otherwise the sh shield effect wouldn't be uh wouldn't be nice okay let's make more space here because now we need to apply the multiplication another now float up this time multiply these two values very well and now we can put it to offset okay it's moving but it's moving too still too fast let's fix the scale here and make it 10 times smaller 0.1 and 0.1 very well this is nice uh, so that gave us a moving noise pattern however for the overall effect it's not enough it would be beneficial to combine it with something as a simple solution uh, i will use the same process but change the panning in the opposite direction and then combine both results by multiplying them let's do that so let's make more space here and now i will select these two nodes press ctrl d to duplicate them put them here and as i said the second one should be moving in the opposite direction so let's make these numbers negative okay and uh, again we need to handle the offset by the time function let's connect this and finally we need to multiply uh, to combine these two results by multiplying them right click another float up change to multiply and connect these values and connect the result wait a minute we are working with uh, vectors so definitely not float up it should be vector up vector up and we have uh, four dimensional vectors here now it should be okay because you might have noticed before that the color of the of the connection changed from purple to azure which definitely looked like uh, it was changing to floats we don't want that and now connect this to albedo okay let's take a look very well it's definitely better it would be even better if we <laughs> change add to multiply as usual i forgot about that let's do it and now that's something more interesting it will look even more interesting after we introduce the alpha value modifications but we'll get to that very quickly 
So we're starting to assemble an animated shield. Let's add a few more enhancements. We'll begin by accentuating the bright areas using the power function. So let me just make more space here and I think we can get rid of this minimap. Where is it here? Yeah, we don't need that because the graph isn't as complicated. And I will add another vector op. So let's duplicate this one and change it to power. And we will we'll just put it to the power of, let's start with two in all dimensions. Okay, and connect to albedo. Okay, this is nice, I like it. Secondly, it would certainly be great if we could give the shield a color other than gray. Let's add an input parameter for that. And the input parameter would be color parameter. Right click, color parameter, and call it, uh, I don't know, shield color. And default value, let's start with something bluish, like this one, why not? All right, and we need to add this value to the result. Let me just put it right after the power. So it would be another vector operation. And let's start with add. I'm not certain if it's better to add or multiply, but we can do both and compare the results. And here. Okay, it seems to be too uh, blue, but maybe it will be better right after we introduce the um, alpha value. What happens if I change it to multiply? Maybe that's better. Let's keep it in multiply and we can modify it at the later phase. Okay, and finally, we should consider that we definitely want the darker parts. It looks bad. Now we can, now we can observe it. The darker parts uh, to be transparent. So we need to modify the alpha output, which is here as well. We'll do it by taking one component from the final texture before coloring, which is this one, and multiply it by an input coefficient that can be another uniform parameter, or we can just start with a constant and connecting it to the alpha. So I will drag here to create a vector decompose, because we want to work only with the one component of this uh, four-dimensional vector. It's vector 4, so let's, for example, work with x and multiply that by flow top, uh, multiply. What could we use? Let's start with 10. So the alpha is really visible and connect it here. All right. I would say we are done with the shield. Oh, definitely, it could use more uh, parameters and it would be better visible if I just get rid of these gizmos. But if we enlarge that, it seems like it is a spherical shield and there are some ripples and everything else is transparent. You can, of course, play with the parameters to make it less transparent or uh, just brighten the ripples or combine colors, add more textures uh, in more directions to create even more uh, original and noise-like effect and so on. So now we can apply the resulting scene to our character. Let's control S to save it first and I'll switch to character and do it here. The simplest way would be just to uh, open the scene and drag it to our character root node. And we have the shield right here. And it seems like we need to change its location. Let's put it up. Okay. That could be fine. Let's see what happens when we start a game. Start a game. 
And yeah, I would say this shield is here and it's moving with our character. Perfect. I guess we could use something like uh, making it more visible, but as a now, now, now it can be visible better when we just run to the sun. So yeah, I would say that we just reached our goal. Perfect. Thank you for attention, and I hope creating interesting effects using visual shaders is now a bit more appealing. Of course, we can map such a shield onto shapes other than spheres, or even onto the character itself, similar to making it invisible in one of the previous videos. It's up to you how far your experiments will take you. So have a great day and see you in the next video.